up y'all it's that crazy ass white boy cotton mask i'm here with a little track breakdown for y'all y'all not ready all right let's get right into it so i'm gonna just break it down by each bus that we have going on here and then i'll talk about the structure in a macro sense so first off we got the bass so for the bass, I recorded direct input um, with like pretty minimal processing. Got a little um, EQ curve, kind of trying to get rid of like the muddiness because it was a little muddy. Um, taking out the highs, um, kind of just leaving the mids, and then some pretty dramatic compression because I really am not very good at bass. Um, so I just wanted everything to sound really consistent. And then we got a side chain from this click track um, that is just white noise that is playing the same thing as the drums, specifically the kick and the drums. And um, the way I got that, because the drums are an audio file, there is a trick within Ableton. You can slice the drums to a new MIDI track and it's not perfect, but you can sort of get it in place and um, basically just get it so the MIDI syncs up with the kick pattern. Like, as you can see, it's like not super quantized. Um, so it really works. So I would highly recommend that it has velocity as well. Um, use that if, if you want some sauce. So yeah, this is how the bass sounds basic um then for the second part we have this sine wave bass that i made with ableton's operator pretty basic just two sine waves one modulating the other and then uh using the wave shaper on the saturator i made this curve um and it's just pretty bassy tried to do this to have a little more harmonic range um, just so it can be heard on like any speaker system, you know? So yeah, that's pretty much the bass. Then I have the Air Windows Compressed Saturator, which is a great plugin. The Air Windows Suite is great. Um, all free, all really high quality plugins. Definitely worth checking out. Um, I think the guy who makes them, he has like explanations for each one of his pl plugins, but there's like a shitload of them. Um, and they're all free, like here, I'll show you, like all this, all these right here are air windows and there's like some I haven't even touched yet cause I just got the whole suite in like the summer, but it's great. Out of the ones that I use, I really love them. So let's move on to drums. So for this we got, um, I play drums. It's like my main instrument. So I have a little, um, sort of brush jazz waltz inspired but it's not in three but sort of has a similar vibe just playing i think this was a single mic like a mid mic um just thought it sounded really nice it's either a mid mic or i maybe added a kick mic as well and then just bounced it out um i'm not entirely positive though but this is what this sounds like So yeah, um, pretty basic, um, basic beat, but gets the job done. Had to do a little bit of warping in this area. Um, and I have some sort of vinyl distortion. I wanted it to sound really like blown out, almost like it was like recorded on tape. Um, that's just something I really love in drums. So it's like got... Um, some like a soft clipper pretty like working somewhat hard uh then i got this little thing to boost the kick which makes me think i probably didn't record the kick mic it was probably just one mid mic um and then reducing the highs right here because it was just like a little bit harsh and then we have the drum slam which is another um airwaves or air windows uh 
plug-in sounds really great just dirties up your drums really nicely breaks up super nice so um, yeah that's what I use there and then we have this little breakdown part um, so I'll just play through it and then I can break down the um, sort of various components of the drums but the drums I'm usually a very drum heavy producer and this one I was not as much but here's what it sounds like Yeah, um, so as you can see, I sort of split it up, build a little tension here. Um, then we have these claps. Um, I believe I recorded these. Yeah, so I must have just recorded myself clapping. And then um, just as you can hear, it's like two different claps looped over and over and over again. Um, so that's why I did really, I think, zero processing on that. Um, just sort of liked how it sat in the mix on its own. Um, then we got the shaker, again, zero processing. Um, that might actually be, I think it's a thing that I made. Um, I just made like a little thing made of a, like made up of like bottle caps that I like to put on my snare drum or my hi-hat when I'm drumming, um, and I was just shaking it. And I may have, no, nah, I thought I maybe pitched it up, but yeah, it's just that. Then we have stick clicks. Yeah, um, just a little bit of compression there, sort of, had a fast attack to like squash the transient a little bit. May have been a little too punchy for my liking. Um, then we have this really interesting guitar thing, as you can see. Um, just like a little rhythmic thing I found. Um, I must have been recording something else and I must have done that on accident and then just chopped it up, put it in there, did a little EQ to it. And I thought it sounded really cool. Um, and it's panned hard right. We have this rim. That's me playing the rim. Um, again, not really any processing. Um, then we got this. So that's me doing like a little rhythmic jazz thing. Uh, definitely at some point had to warp it there's no way i played that in time this is probably just like normalized or something or like rendered out then this little thing right here yeah hard left kind of a cool sound i don't even remember what that's from it might be from a guitar as well um so yeah next we have the vocals um i'm not a great singer so there's a lot of auto-tune and harmonies to mask the fact that I'm not a great singer. Um, so this is uh, sort of the harmony right here. Force myself oh, 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 we got to readjust the auto-tune because I have like one of the most fucked auto-tune plugins in the entire world. Um, it's max for live though, it's free. That's sort of a theme of this video. Everything I use is free. Um, and you don't need to pay for plugins to get a good sound. That's some bullshit if anybody ever told you different. Like, I mean, I feel like nobody really does tell you different, but um, in my experience, but free plugins are the move. Force myself into decline. Yeah, um, so there's that. Just got some. Um, I have a gate sort of cutting out. I must have recorded it in a really like noisy room. I don't really have a great recording setup. I'm very much in the box uh, when it comes to making music majority of the time. This, this project in general is a little out of the ordinary for me because I was recording a lot more 
Um, and I was trying to just see what it was all about, but um, the rooms that I've recorded in aren't the greatest, um, which is just is what it is. So I have some gate. This I have a little bit of delay on it. Um, and then this is just another same signal flow, same signal chain. Then we have this section. On my porch breathing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'll probably speed up through this, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, for this. On my porch breathing the night. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sort of got um, similar sort of thing going on. Uh, this one I have a little de -er due to the fact that it was a super sibilant uh, when I was recording this, especially this part specifically right here. Stars are lighting up the sky. And there's some, some very heavy compression just because you can sort of see the contrast and dynamics here, and I didn't like the way this part stuck out, so I compress it pretty heavily um, to a point where everything sort of sounded um, to my liking. Because uh, you can see, like, the rest of this waveform is really, like, you know, normal person probably would have just re-recorded it, but um, I just didn't because <laughs> I'm lazy. Uh, yeah, so then we have this right here. Wanna know my story? Should it get mad? Dog? Yeah, that that's a little a little corny, but um, this little thing. Should it get mad? Dog? All right, all right, bro, all right. But uh, I think it kind of like I have it low enough in the mix to where it's like, it just adds a little bit of ambiance. Um. But yeah questionable decisions but it's okay um yeah this is air this is another air windows plugin it's great um really makes your vocals cut through the mix it just boosts like your high end to a point that's super effective so um we'll do on and off so this is it off wanna know my story should it get mad dog and then this is with it on wanna know my story should it get mad dog this adds a little more brightness Compressor, vocal doubler from Isotope. Um, this is also free, really cool. Um, some DS to compensate for the the air plugin. Then we got EQ cutting out the lows and an auto tune. And then um, I guess I was adjusting the stereo image of this. Wanted it a little bit wider. Uh, there's this right here. It's just a little transition point because like in the context of the song I'll play it. Shit that stays inside my brain's fucking back up. I won't tell you on this song really ever but Yeah, just a little bit of ambiance added to it. Heavy auto-tune, heavy, heavy auto-tune. Um basically only having two notes activated, so it's yeah, just really wanted it to sound kind of glitched out. And then we have this part right here. I can learn a lot from what it fucking did to me. And that is layered. That is layered with this. I can learn a lot from what it fucking did to me. So for that lowered part, um, I am... F I thought I was... Oh, you know what? Yeah, I did do it earlier. Um... And then I must have rebounced it out. Uh, but it was like I was fucking with the... Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah. So this one, I format shifted it. So it's like... I can learn a lot from what it fucking did to me. Yeah. Um, pitched up a little bit. and But format shifted. Sounds tweaked out and cool. Um, yeah, so... That is... Yeah, the right here, it's the same thing as the last time, as you can see. And then right here, we have like a little harmony part. Um, just super like waved out, um, like far back in the mix. Very similar processing, if not the exact same. 
just a little bit different in the compression, but it's just a little harmony that I had going. Fade it up. <laughs> As you can see, I chopped it up because I was not going to sing all of that because my voice is not that consistent. Um, and I wanted it to sound really consistent. Um, if you don't want that to sound consistent, then don't do that. But for me, for what I wanted, that's what I did. Um, so yeah, now we're going to move down to the synths, all that shit. Um, so we got um, this little thing. It was on the 4th of July. Uh, I, would, I I live in Detroit, and we were just, like, posted up. I was with my cousin. It was a good time. It was, like, a good memory and shit. And it's also just, like, ambiance. Like, fireworks sound cool. I got, like, a little voice memo on my phone, so I just put this in. You know, just vibes, as the kids say. Um... But yeah, I have a little delay, some auto pan, compression, make everything sound the same, and then band pass. It's very subtle. I You can barely hear it in the song, but I just kind of wanted to add it. I think it adds a little something. And then also a lot of these sends. Um, I think I have all three of them being sent. So I got the convolution reverb. Valhalla super massive delay slash reverb plugin, kind of on a re or yeah reverb setting, and then just a basic delay. Um, so that's what I have for that. Then we have this. Yeah, so this this is a main guitar. Sort of some chords I wrote out. I never remember the chords that I play after I play them, and I don't really. I know music theory, but I don't use it. Um, kind of just because it's what I'm used to when it comes to making music. Um, and saying that I know music theory is a bit of a stretch, but yeah. Um, it's just a little, like, finger, not finger-picked, but not using a pick, uh, like, chord progression throughout pretty much the entire song, song. And I think I bounced it out, so it's like playing the same thing, hard pan right and left, big stereo image you get the idea um yeah so there's that then there's this this is why it is called food review because it is a food review i did with my brother mm. now let's go into analytics first time i this is a mustard i think the pickles are a little yeah, too strong there's a crunch of the pickles yeah um you know pretty similar processing to the other sample i had um and yeah, we're talking about Hunter House hamburgers. If you are in the Metro Detroit area, you need to go there. This shit's fine. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna look back at this video and want to kill myself for saying that, but it's okay. Um. So we have this. I don't remember what this is. Yes, I do remember what this is. This is just some. Um, I think it's my. It might be my Volca FM with, like, a crazy, like, just, if you have one of those, you know, like, the arpeggiator on that thing is crazy. Um, sounds really cool. Um, so, wait, let me see. Yeah, it definitely is. So, I was probably just messing with some knobs and just recorded it in, and it's super back in the mix. Um... One thing to note also is the way that I mix my music is I sort of mix really quiet and then I bring everything up in the master. Um, so that's why like you see values like negative 41.3. It's like because I'm going to bring it back up later. Um, I just like the character that like the limiter can add. Um, so that's sort of how I mix this project. Um, not saying I'll mix like that for the rest of my life, but it's a constant learning process, but that's why you see like such low values. Um, yeah, then we have this, I, I don't remember what synth this is from. 
but um, I got some vinyl distortion, some chorus, trying to keep it super tripped out, you know, um, then there's this. Little lead that only happens in the outro, super atmospheric, um, a lot of reverb, as you can see. Um, have the LFO going as a sample and hold waveform, keeping it like sort of s making it sound sort of organic and like vulnerable almost. And then for the actual patch, I gotta, I'm using this algorithm, so it's just everything multiplies into itself. We got a sine wave, then a saw, then another saw with some adjustments to the chorus and fine frequency, and then another saw. So pretty much almost all saws. Um, yeah, a little bit of stereo image, you know. Then we got this right here. I believe this is some bells that I had from when I played percussion in like high school and elementary school and middle school. So it's just sampled with a lot of chorus and phaser. A little sensitive, you know. Being a sensitive white boy and all, I had to add the bell. Fuck is he talking about? Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, then we got this. Don't know what this is. Yes, I do. Yeah, another operator patch based on a saw wave with some sign, saw sign square. Um, you know, adding some coarse shit. I, I honestly, like, a lot of the times I just, like, when I'm making a patch in operator, I just, um, I, you just gotta fuck around. Um, but that's, like, the main synth I use. Uh, that's actually changing because I just got like vital i got hip to vital this shit right here it's super fire it's like a free plug-in it's basically serum um but this synth uh you know just short attack or sorry yeah like no attack and like a short decay just super plucky um right here we got this thing don't know what it is yet Yeah, so this must have been, um, this could have been a mini log, or this could have been a Juno. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a mini log because it doesn't really have the high end of the Juno, but the Juno has a filter too, but I don't know. Um, I really don't know what synth this is, but it sounds great. I really like that synth. Um, then we got this. feels like a Juno more so or I don't know <laughs> or a mini log I don't fucking know sorry um <coughs> <coughs> but yeah now we got this little thing I call dead mouse because it's kind of reminds me of um if you know the song I remember it's just a little like a little stabby EDM sort of synth line <laughs> You know, yeah. Um, we have this right here. This is super like glidey synth using Galactic from Air Windows. As favorite reverb, hands down, one hundred percent. Sounds amazing. It's just a saw and a sine wave, but it's just like sometimes those basic patches sort of hit different. Um especially for like this sort of indie style of music. This is not really the type of music I make, but usually, but I thought this one came together pretty nicely. Um, and it lends itself to that kind of synth production, just like really simple sort of shit. You don't want to go too crazy with like the envelopes and like, like pitch envelopes and shit and like distortion. It's just, you know, you gotta know what kind of sound design is needed for what kind of song. So yeah, 
uh, there's this. Yeah, um, this is probably another random synth that I had at my house at the time from the people I was living with. It could be a matriarch, honestly, um, but I'm not positive, but all I know is it sounds pretty good, so yeah. Sorry, I wish there was more I could say about some of these, because like the, my favorite synth sounds are the ones that I just don't remember what they were, but yeah. Then we have this. Yeah, another mystery synth, just with some delay and um, cutting out the low end. Uh, so now we have, now we're kind of getting into some more software oriented synthesizers. So we got, sorry, um, this. Yeah, um, I'm, I believe I am doing something with the LFO, mapped it to something, I feel like it's a, oh no, you know what, that's probably from the auto pan, um, just put it out of phase a little bit, or I was fucking with this parameter right here, so it's like a really tweaked out, um, tremolo, sort of, uh, and we got square wave, saw wave, slight detune, um, yeah, a uh, little, little filter thing going on, filter envelope, I think, let me listen again, yeah, yeah, a little bit, um, then we have this, this is a weird plugin, but it kind of works when it works, it's called Triple Cheese from Yuhi, I don't even, I think it's like comb synthesis, it's something weird, um, yeah, yeah, comb synthesizer, um, but it's just like super thick. But yeah, that is a free plugin as well. Then we got the Tyrell N6. I'm not entirely sure what synth this is emulating. I feel like it might be a profit, but this is also free. Uh, this little situation right here. If you want to look at it, feel free. Um, but we got this going on. Yeah. Uh, and then probably my favorite free synth is the OBXD. It's like an Oberheim sort of imitation. Got a little sine wave LFO on the filter. Um, saw and square wave, uh, got a slight envelope, actually a pretty fat attack envelope, but yeah, we'll just see how that sounds. Also I have some glide on there, model E, which is like a Moog 1 sort of situation. Um, This sort of lends itself to having some sort of time-based effect on it, because on its own it doesn't sound like as good, in my opinion. Um, let's see. I mean, it sounds okay, um, but yeah, I have a little... Um, I think I was trying to do a little dry-wet thing here, which is intriguing because... We got the mix knob right here. I must have, it must have just sounded different to me. So I just did a little dry wet thing, uh, compressor cutting out the low end. Then we have another Tyrell um, right here. And I have some form of automation. 
turns up to like a super like buttery like I don't know really good sound and then this is like Ableton's little electric piano um, thing I wish I had um, addictive keys at this time because that probably would have sounded a lot better than what I had going on here but it doesn't sound horrible but I'll just play it for you yeah so there's that and then here we are getting to some guitars um, so this is what I like to do is I play really simple sort of guitar lines and then I layer them all together. Actually, I'm going to take this one out. I layer them all together and it kind of makes a more, it's kind of like counterpoint, honestly. Um, makes a little bit more of a, like, it's like a cohesive sound. So I'll just play it. So just this one. Oh, just this one. This one. And then this one. Yeah, and then just sort of all together. You know, sounds pretty cool. Uh, and then this is also a guitar, uh, but it has some grain delay on it going up an octave so it just sounds like really glitched out and amazing uh so so yeah as you can tell um i didn't really do a lot of processing on these guitars just sort of left them as is just wanted like a clean sound um and yeah, I think it worked out pretty well. And then we have this right here. It just sort of like, sounds like a bug or something. Um, it's two sine waves pitched up high, messing with the LFO amount. So that's why you like hear it getting super resonant and then dropping back down. Got a saturator with a using the wave shaper, which I fucking love using this thing. Um, just like adjusting like the wave shape, a little bit of compression, keeping it sort of all uniform. And we have this. That's sort of the melody in some respects. Uh, I'm sending it to. The supermassive, um, and yeah, it's just a little, a slight little envelope on the filter basic patch, um, yeah, and then, let me see if I did, yeah, and I messed with the sync a little bit, um, but the other one is pretty much the same, and pretty big detune uh, between the two oscillators. Then we have the OBXD again. Um, it's super atmospheric, you know, super massive on there. Using it as in a delay, uh, along with a ping pong delay. Uh, just sort of really blending it out. And yeah, that's pretty much it for each individual track. I will now go over the buses and what I did for each bus so the way that I operate when I do busing because I have Ableton 9 and I can't do groups within groups um, I basically take um, why did I just do that ha 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 um, I take an input track and then I take an input track and then I take all the tracks I want to go into that input track and I set it to be the the track that I want it to be like to go into the track that I want it to do so this is the input track it's set as in right here and then I send all the things I want like for instance the vocals 
I send all the vocals into this track and then I can do all the processing I want within each one of these tracks. So if you have Ableton 9 like me, that is the workaround. Um, so yeah, basically we'll start with the bass, just a compressed saturator, um, which is another Air Windows plugin. Breaks up super nice, but also, as you can tell, compresses the... Um, it doesn't really have attack settings. Um, I think clamp is like the threshold. It doesn't really have attack or release. Um, not sure what expand does. I'm assuming use like it transforms into an expander as well, but I have never ran into a scenario where I've had a need for that. It's got the drive parameter, dry wet, output, all that shit. Um, so that's all I have on the bass bus. Drums. <coughs> it's a glue compressor with a soft clipper. Um, somewhat short attack, but I wanted to keep the transients, um, and then compress saturator as well, just break it up a little bit. Um, for the vocals, I have the cutting out the low end, glue compressor, air 2, which is a great plugin, I think I talked about it already, but, um, you know, brings out the high end and makes your vocals really cut through a mix, DS, which is this is one of the best DSers I've used. Compressed saturator just to warm it up a little bit. Uh, as you can see, the dry wet is sort of turned down a little bit. And then ping pong delay automated to be turned on when I need it. Um, for the synths, didn't want to do too much, but compressed saturator just to sort of color it, cutting out a little bit of the low end, leaving some space for the bass. And yeah, that is pretty much the entirety of my song food review. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you check out my song, um, on Spotify under Cotton Mask, on Apple Music under Duncan McKilla, but soon to be Cotton Mask. You know, that shit takes like a year to change, but yeah, thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you guys want me to do more of these. I should be releasing singles. I'm going to try to plan on doing it every single month of the next year. I'll be working with a lot of local Detroit artists, so yeah, just keep your eyes peeled, and thank you so much for watching, um, and have a beautiful rest of your day.